Hello everyone, welcome back to Hills and Haulers Homestead. Homesteader Mike here, and we officially have bunnies on the homestead. So these are all New Zealand. This is one of this is a, a buck. Of course, we named him Bucky because he's a mix of a New Zealand red uh, with a New Zealand white, and he looks like almost a white-tailed deer does in the, the collaring. This is a mix between a New Zealand red and New Zealand white. This name is uh, this one's name is Patch. And then the two females, this is a pure New Zealand red. Her name is Lily. And this is a New Zealand white. And the boy named her Snowball. Say hi to everybody, Snowball. So immediately we got him here. And we have sweet potatoes going out to Ying Yang. And <laughs> if you know what that means. And uh, we have vines growing clear across our patio from one of the beds. So uh, sweet potato vines are excellent nutrition for rabbits. Not regular potato vines sweet potato vines so we got them a couple sweet potato vines and some cucumbers and stuff because that's good for them just to get them some good greenery going um, these are 32 ounce heated water bottles so in the winter time you just plug them in and it'll keep the water from freezing these are seven inch wide feeders that you fill from the outside 16 percent rabbit pellets it's got the screen on the bottom so it allows all the dust and stuff to kind of fall through and each setup is the same. They're all in 30 by 36 inch tractors. And in this 16 foot building, we were only able to get, with adequate spacing, four across the back. So when we get the next two, I'm gonna have to get a little creative in here because I'm gonna have to put probably one here and then bring another one in and put it maybe right here because the door swing is open that way. So I'd probably have to put it right there to bring the other two in. Uh, or I could put them here in the front, but I'm gonna have to see how much room it's gonna lead me to walk through here because these are the boxes they came in. This is the feed can. So I'm gonna have to kind of play around and figure out how much room I'm actually gonna have in here with them. Um, always go bigger when you think you've got it big enough. Add a couple more feet. Ah, well, I figured 10 by 16 would be big enough for six rabbits, but <laughs> lesson learned. Ah, we'll make it work anyways. So eventually what I'll do, uh, is all the, all their poop and stuff will go here they say from everything that i've read and watched and stuff like that it's better for their urine because their urine will smell real bad it's better for their urine to soak into the dirt rather than put like gravel or anything down there to kind of catch it and absorb it it's better to let it go in the dirt and that way you don't get as you know near the, the smell going eventually i'm going to devise some kind of collection system where i can collect their pellets rather than just let them fall on the ground there I'll collect their, their rabbit pellets, and that is fantastic fertilizer. You can use it directly on your garden because their poop is not a, a hot manure. It's not high in anything that's going to hurt your plants immediately. So you can put it directly on it, or you can uh, collect it, let it dry, and you can grind it up and use it as you need to around and on your plants and stuff. So we'll definitely be collecting rabbit poop because that's pretty much fertilizer all you want. But they're all settling in here. It'll take them a couple days. There is a 12 foot or 12, 12 inch by 12 inch tile, ceramic or porcelain tile in each cage. That allows the rabbit to get on the tile off of the, the wire and it gives their feet a break. And it's also cooler for them when it's hot outside because that tile will stay cool. And if need be, we can lift that tile up and put a, a block of ice under it if it gets really hot and it'll help keep the rabbit cool. Now, eventually I'll get some kind of setup in here where I get a fan um to blow in here if they need it when it gets real hot but with this setup they get all around 360 degrees airflow and that's what we wanted in the winter time so this would be north uh, in the winter time i can actually put a tarp on this side and this is west i can put a tarp along this back side and let it come down and that'll keep most of the breeze and the weather off of them i can do the whole thing in tarp if i need to just to kind of cut it off but I'm not going to do anything permanent because these are a hot weather animal. They're not a cold weather, or they're not, uh, they are a cold weather. They're built for cold weather. They're not built for hot weather too well. So they're, they're more cold hardy than they are heat tolerant. But we're just letting them get adjusted and get settled in here. And hey, you stopped chewing on that already. Already starting, aren't you? It's already chewing on the, the uh, strap right there, the zip tie. I spin that around here. Yeah, I might be able to work that around here. I got the other kind of setup where I can use it to put it on there and keep them from chewing on it. 
All right, so anyways, bunnies on the homestead. There's cucumber in there, like I said, and sweet potato vine. Their feeders are full. Their waters are full. I'll come back and check on them here in a little bit, make sure everybody's doing okay. They seem to be okay. They're sniffing, learning their environment. Patches over there cleaning themselves. Bucky's like looking around, trying to learn his environment. They've all eaten on their, their uh, sweet potato vine a little bit. So there we go, one more step closer to that freedom and that uh, self-sufficiency, self-reliance. And as per the previous video that I put out today, <laughs> is it profitable? Every bite my family takes is profit. All right, so these are 14 weeks old. Um, a friend of mine who's also the breeder of these said, uh, you know, you can breed them at 16 weeks, but he prefers to wait until 20 weeks because it gives them just that little extra bit of maturity and, and good body size. So I will do exactly what he recommends and I'll wait till 20 weeks. And that'll put us, you know, probably into September, uh, middle to the end of September, which is when I was hoping to be able to start breeding them anyways. For now, they're going to be in here. The plan is in the future is to get rabbit tractors built. And of course, these guys will get moved here eventually too, uh, the chickens. But the plan is, is to get rabbit tractors built and I'll line all four of them up out here. And these rabbits will go on grass. They'll be allowed to free forage in the grass in their tractors. And that'll help cut back on the cost of uh, feed and stuff. And it gives them that natural grass and natural forage for them anyways. Cool thing is, is right here beside their rabbit house is black locust. You can see the leaves here. And black locust is one of their treats. They love foraging black locust leaves. So right here beside the hutch. All right. So that's it. I'll leave you with that without dragging this on much more and trying to act like I know what I'm talking about. But rabbits on homestead, we're going to see how it works out. I'll keep you guys posted. Get prepared. Stay prepared. Take care. God bless.